Hi, everybody. My name is Josiah Coulter. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm coming to you today from the Clark College Counseling and Health Center, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sexual orientation and gender. These topics can sometimes be a little overwhelming for people to fully wrap their head around. There's a lot of terminology um, and a lot of terms that you may not fully understand. So I'm here to help you learn some new definitions and learn some new terminology around the topic of sexual orientation and gender. Before we get begin to really dive in with the presentation, I'd like you to just reflect a little bit on these questions that I have for you. So the first one is, what are some beliefs about sexual orientation and or gender that you grew up hearing? The second is, what are some questions you have about sexual orientation and or gender now that you would like answered? And lastly, why is educating yourself on these topics an important skill to have? So just think about these for a moment, maybe pause this video and write these questions down and think about them as we're going through this presentation together. Okay, so we're gonna start with sexual orientation. So what is sexual orientation? A great definition for it is an inherent or immutable, enduring, emotional, romantic, or sexual attraction to other people. So it's basically um, how we feel towards other people emotionally, romantically, sexually. Um, and it's important to note that it's not just sexual attraction. It's also emotional and or romantic. So it can be any one of those. It can be a combination of the three, or maybe none at all, as you will see. So we're going to go through some types of sexual orientations, and I just want to point out that this is not an exhaustive list. There are many types of sexual orientations, and these are some of the most common ones. So first of all, I'd like to talk about asexuality and allosexuality. So remember how I said that um, sexual orientation, you may not experience any kind of sexual attraction or romantic attraction towards anyone? Well, that is asexuality. So the, the definition is the lack of a sexual attraction or desire for other people. The antonym for that is allosexual. So allosexual people do experience sexual attraction or desire for other people. For example, I myself identify as allosexual. I do experience sexual attraction and romantic desire for other people. Aromantic is people who are, um, who don't develop romantic attractions for other people. Um, that can be uh, short, it can be shortened to arrow. Also, asexual can be shortened to ace. Um, and the antonym for aromantic is alloromantic. So those are people who do experience, um, who do experience romantic attraction. So again, for example, I identify as alloromantic. I do experience romantic attraction to other people. Individuals can be asexual, so they don't experience sexual attraction, but they can be alloromantic. They may experience romantic desires for other people. They can also be the opposite. They may not experience any romantic attraction, but they may experience sexual attraction, or they can be both. Okay. So now that we have a better understanding of what asexual and aromantic mean, as well as allosexual and alloromantic, Let's talk a little bit more about sexual orientation. So homosexuality. This is characterized by sexual or romantic attraction to people of one's same sex. So for example, I myself identify as a homosexual. I am attract, I myself identify as a man and I am attracted romantically and sexually to other men. However, I do want to note that this is sometimes considered an outdated or offensive term. Um, just saying, oh, you know, uh, say, I don't typically go around saying that I identify as homosexual. I typically use the word gay. So the term gay is typically preferred, not always, but typically, and can be used by men, women, and non-binary individuals. 
or genderqueer individuals. Um, it's kind of an umbrella term that encompasses um, a wide variety of non-heterosexual um, sexual orientations. Um, lesbian is often is a term that you may come across often, and it's um, used by gay women to describe their sexual orientation. Um, so a lesbian woman is attracted to other women. Now, heterosexual is the what is considered the opposite of homosexuality. It's characterized by sexual or romantic attraction between people of the opposite sex. And we'll get a little bit more into this terminology of the concept of opposite sex or same sex a little bit later, because gender is a little bit more complex than just man and woman. But for the sake of simplicity at this time, homosexual is attracted to someone of the same sex and heterosexual is the opposite sex. So for example, my parents are heterosexual. My dad is only attracted to women and my mom is only attracted to men. Um, the kind of shorthand for this term is straight. Um, so that's kind of the, the word you'll hear most often um, in just everyday language. Okay, bisexual people. So bisexual people are those who are emotionally, romantically, or sexually attracted to more than one sex, gender, or gender identity. So oftentimes when we think of the term bisexual, we think of someone who is attracted to men and women. However, remember I mentioned that gender is a little bit more complicated than that. So um, you can be bisexual and be attracted to men, women, and genderqueer individuals who may, maybe don't identify as men or women. You can, be, you can be attracted to women and genderqueer individuals and not men, or maybe genderqueer individuals, men and not women. Pansexual describes someone who has the potential for emotional, romantic, or sexual attraction to people of any gender. Though not necessarily simultaneously or in the same way or to the same degree. That same um, language is used in the bisexual definition. And what do we mean by that? Well, sometimes when we think of the word bisexual, we may think, oh, someone is 50% attracted to women and 50% attracted to men. Well, that may not necessarily be true. Someone can be bisexual and be primarily attracted to men, but they also have some attraction to women as well. Or um, perhaps, they are pansexual and their primary sexual um, attraction is towards women, but they also have attraction to all other genders. You see, it's a little bit more complex than just this um, binary of, uh, you know, 50% uh, attracted to men, 50% attracted to women. Okay, so gray sexual. So this term is used to refer to people who experience limited sexual attraction. It's actually, it falls under the umbrella of asexual. So remember how I said that asexual people don't experience sexual attraction? Well, gray sexual people do experience some, but it's typically not in large um, um, amounts. They may not be, um, they may not experience a lot of sexual attraction. It may be very limited. Um, and you can be a gay, gray sexual person. So for example, um, I do not identify as gray sexual, but if I were to, um, perhaps, you know, I am a man who is attracted to other men, but only in a limited, um, only in a limited amount. You can also be straight, gray sexual, bi, gray sexual. It can be combined with all other sexual orientations. Demisexual is a sexual orientation where people only experience sexual attraction to people that they have close emotional connections with. So that emotional bond has to be formed first. Um, some people just experience sexual attraction to um, all sorts of people without having any kind of emotional bond. For example, I personally don't identify as demisexual. I can experience sexual attraction to another man without having that emotional bond. But someone who is demisexual has to get to know that person and have that emotional bond in place before they're sexually attracted to them. 
And again, just like gray sexual, you can be gay demisexual, straight demisexual, bi demisexual, et cetera, et cetera. Again, that is um, not an exhaustive list of all types of sexual orientations, but it is a list of some of the most common ones that you may experience out in the um, everyday world. So now that we have a better understanding of sexual orientation, let's talk a little bit about gender. So first I wanna differentiate between gender identity and gender expression. So gender identity is one's innermost concept of the self as male, female, both or neither. It's how you perceive yourself, how you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself on the inside. And it can be, someone's gender identity can be the same or different from their sex assigned at birth. And what do I mean about, by sex assigned at birth? So when human beings are born, generally the doctor looks at the baby's genitalia and looks at either their penis or their vagina and says, okay, if they have a penis, they are a male. And if they have a vagina, they are a female. And most people have the same gender identity that was theirs assigned at birth. So for example, I was assigned male at birth and I identify as a man. However, not everybody does. And we will talk a little bit more about that later. I just want you to understand exactly what that term sex assigned at birth really means. So gender identity, it's how we feel about ourselves. It's very intimate, very personal. Gender expression is how we appear to other people. It's how we, um, it's the appearance of our gender identity. It's expressed through our behavior, our clothing, our hair, the way we talk, um, and it may or may not conform to these kind of social ideas and characteristics of what um, being male or female means. So, you remember how I talked about how some people do not, um, their gender identity does not align with their sex assigned at birth? Well, that would be transgender people. So transgender is an umbrella term for people whose gender identity and or expression is different from their cultural expectations based on the sex they were assigned at birth. So for example, um, a baby is born, a baby is born and is assigned male at birth. However, as they grow up, their inner experience is not of that of a male, but it's that of a female, their gender identity is female. So they would be, they would most likely identify as transgender. The antonym for transgender is cisgender. So for example, I identify as cisgender. Remember how I mentioned earlier that I was assigned male at birth and I identify as a man. So I am a cisgender man. Um, Transgender is often shortened to just the word trans and cisgender can just be shortened to the word cis. Um, just as kind of a shorthand, you may experience those. Gender is unique for each and every individual. So some may identify as masculine, some as feminine, some as different combinations of both and some may identify as neither at all. You may have heard the term that gender is a spectrum with male at one end and female at the other, but that is also somewhat of a limiting um, view of gender because the idea is that there's male and there's female and then there are those who kind of fall in between. However, some may not fall in between at all. They may fall off the line completely. They may identify in a completely different manner. And so I like to think of gender as a constellation it's a variety of beautiful stars that make up this gorgeous portrait of all the different types of gender identities that there are in the world. Now, non-binary people, um, well, it's a term that can mean different things, but at its core, it's used to describe someone who does not identify as exclusively male or female. So you know how we talked about um, how generally, um, 
people are assigned at a male or female at birth. This is what we call a gender binary. Binary meaning two, um, male and female. However, there are many individuals who do not feel male, either fully male, fully female, or neither at all. Um, and those that feel that way identify, they often use the, um, the term non-binary. Um, there are other terms that fall under this non-binary umbrella that you may experience. Um, here's a list here. And again, this is not an exhaustive list, um, but genderqueer, agender, gender fluid, androgynous, bigender, multigender. The list goes on. There are so many ways to identify and to express one's gender. Um, it's not just male or female. Okay. A little bit about intersex and culturally bound identities. So what is intersex? So intersex is used to describe people who have chromosomes, anatomy, or other sex characteristics that can't be categorized as exclusively male or female. Okay, so remember how I said that when a baby is born, if they have a penis, they're, um, they're assigned male, and if they have a vagina, they're assigned female. Well, some babies are born and they don't have, um, they don't, uh, they may have a mix of both genitalia and it's not very clear whether they have um, a penis or a vagina. And so these individuals are categorized as intersex. And I wanna also be clear that intersex does not only um, apply to the genitalia. Someone could be born with exclusively female genitalia, but still be intersex because of their chromosomes. So you may have learned in school that an XX chromosome makes a girl and an XY chromosome makes a boy. However, there are lots of different types of intersex conditions. You can be, you can have an XXX chromosome, you can have an XXY chromosome, um, and sometimes these result in variations in genitalia and sometimes they don't. Um, hormones are also um, at play in this. So for example, there is an intersex condition known as androgen insensitivity syndrome. What is that, you ask? Well, it's someone who has an XY chromosome, the male chromosome, but when they are, um, when they're in the womb, their body is not able to respond to the masculinizing hormones, the androgens. And so their body develops as a female. And so they may be born with um, a vagina and may appear to be a female, um, based on their genitalia, but their chromosomes actually show that they are XY. They have the male chromosomes. Um, so there are a lot of different intersex conditions. I'm not going to get into all of them, um, but I just want to um, put a spotlight on this because uh, these folks do exist and they deserve our respect. And also, individuals that um, are intersex can identify in terms of gender in many different ways. Um, so it is not, um, being intersex does not limit how you identify in terms of your gender, um, and your gender expression. And I also want to point out that some cultures have third or fourth gender identities that are exclusive to that culture. Um, some examples of these, again, not an exhaustive list, but some examples are the hijra individuals, um, primarily in India and Pakistan, down in South Asia. Um, they do not identify as male or female. They are a um, recognized third gender. Um, you may have heard of um, the term two-spirit, which is another example of a gender identity that is found in many Native American tribes. And another one um, are the Mouche individuals. Um, and these these individuals are found down in the Zapotec cultures of southern Mexico. Okay, a little bit about pronouns. So, you have pronouns, I have pronouns, most of us have pronouns, um, 
and it's a way to, pronouns are um, a way to kind of recognize someone's gender identity. Um, they are very integral into how we express ourselves and our gender. Um, so for example, earlier I introduced myself as Josiah and I said my pronouns are he, him, his. Remember I mentioned that I was assigned male at birth and I identify as a cisgender man. And so I use the traditional male pronouns that are found in the English language, he, him, and his. The traditional female pronouns in the English language are she, her, and hers. However, these are not the only two sets of pronouns. There's also the singular they pronoun, um, often used among non-binary and queer individuals. Uh, that would be they, them, and theirs. Now, you may be asking me, Josiah, isn't they and them a plural word? Yes and no. So they and them is a plural word, but it can be used in a singular way. And um, it has been used in a singular um, way for literally hundreds of years. It's actually in the dictionary as well. Um, and most likely you have used the they and them in a singular manner before. For example, if someone leaves a jacket at your house and you're not sure who it belongs to and you're not sure of the gender of the person it belongs to, you might say, hmm, it looks like somebody left their coat here. It's a perfect example of using a singular they or their in that case. Somebody left their coat here. Um, and then I want to just make a little note of neo pronouns. So again, not an exhaustive list, but neo pronouns, um, once again, often used by non-binary um, and genderqueer individuals. And these are pronouns that um, are that are um, not traditionally male or traditionally female. Um, some of these may include, uh, as you see, this first one is Z, here, and here's. You also have Z, Zem, Zir. And then the bottom one is pronounced the same way, Z, Zem, Zir, but it's spelled differently. When it comes to pronouns, out of respect, it's important to use an individual's correct pronouns. Using someone, using the wrong pronouns for somebody is a sign of great disrespect. Um, and what I often do, if you're not sure of what somebody's pronouns are, there's no problem in asking. But what I do is I introduce mine first. I say, hi, I'm Josiah. My pronouns are he, him, his. What's your name and what are your pronouns? That way, the pressure is um, alleviated a little bit from them. You've already introduced your name and your pronouns, and you're letting them know that it's safe to um, tell you what their name and their pronouns are. A couple other terms that I want to talk about. So I've used this word um, frequently throughout this presentation, but the word queer. And it's a term that people often use to express a a spectrum of identities and orientations. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge umbrella term. I would kind of, for me personally, this is my perspective, but queer is kind of this huge umbrella word. Um, it includes those who don't identify as straight, folks who are non-binary. Um, it can refer to sexual orientation or gender identity or gender expression. It can be used in so many different ways. Um, it was previously used as a slur and there are some individuals who still um, don't like that word. So if somebody tells you that they are offended by it, um, you should be respectful um, of their feelings. However, many um, LGBTQ folks have reclaimed the word and identify openly um, as and proudly as queer. And then questioning. So this is a term used to describe people who are in the process of, of exploring their sexual orientation or gender identity. Maybe they're not quite sure yet um, where they land on that beautiful constellation. Um, and they're kind of still trying to figure things out for themselves. So they may identify just as, as questioning. Okay, so those are all of the terms I have for you today. Again, we're just kind of skimming the surface of um, sexual orientation and gender identity. Um, 
But as we end today, I'd like you to reflect on these questions. So what myths or beliefs were busted for you today about sexual orientation and gender identity? Did you learn anything new about sexual orientation and or gender? How can you continue to educate yourself on this topic? And lastly, how can you help educate other people? It has been a pleasure going through this presentation with you today. And I just wanna encourage you, if you ever have um, questions about your own sexual orientation, your own gender identity, or perhaps you um, have a friend who just came out to you as queer or gay or trans and you're not sure how to navigate that, or maybe you have something going on in your life that has nothing to do with um, sexual orientation or gender identity, whatever it is, feel free to contact the Clark College Counseling and Health Center. We are here for you. We have licensed mental health uh, practitioners ready to explore these topics with you and um, help you live a more meaningful and rich, um, enriched life. Um, so the phone number is there as well as the email and also our current hours. And maybe the best part about CHC is that it's also free to um, currently enrolled students. Um, so take advantage of this free mental health care. Okay, here are my lovely references. All right, well, it has been a wonderful meeting with you today. And uh, check out my other videos. I have another video on the coming out process and um, a video on self-care. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.